Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I would do another episode on my Ben Orford Mokotogan. Um, now this is a really, really nice carving tool. Um, as I said previously, you know, it's one that I've been after for a while. Um, and the, the weird thing is it's used in a really different way to any other carving tool that I'm used to. Um, so I've been playing around with it since the last episode. Um, I've only really had it a couple of weeks now. And to be honest, um, you know, I'm really liking it, but it, I am really struggling to get used to it. Um, so as I said before, the idea is that you hold it in this kind of manner. Um, I'll put my hand on that so you can see it a bit better. Um, with your thumb supporting the back edge of the handle. Um, and you're using it in a sort of pulling motion towards yourself um, like so. Now, I've seen some really good videos on YouTube with people using these who are obviously very proficient in their use and they're taking off very long, continuous cuts and they're getting kind of, you know, on a piece like this, they would be getting kind of a ribbon of um, uh, excess, if you like, coming off. Um, now, I'm getting very small pieces like this, a bit close to the camera for you. Um, and really, I'm not going to be doing anything massively interesting today, but I picked this up out of my wood pile the other day. It's just a piece of eucalyptus, um, still partly green, but it's got a really nice heft to it. And I thought, you know what, this would actually make quite a nice carving mallet. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is just kind of smoothing down this end here. You know, the size of this at the moment, you know, you can get your hand around it and that's fine, it would work. But I actually like to have a slightly smaller handle so you can get a better grip and, and more than anything to make it more comfortable. Um, so my plan today is just to smooth this down with the Mokotogan. Um, and I figured I'd just sort of pick up on a few points that I've, I've sort of um, come across while I've been using it. Um, so again, you hold it like so, and you're just pulling it towards yourself in very much a, a sort of a planing motion. And this is the problem I keep getting. I'm not sure if you can see that particularly well on the camera there, um, but I'm getting kind of caught up. Um, and just taking off these really small shavings. Now what I think I'll do actually, let me move the camera a bit closer so you can see a bit better what it is I'm doing. Um, and I'll kind of try and give you a bit of an explanation as to what I'm finding difficult um, and, and how I think it's meant to be used and how I'm trying to work around that. Right then guys, so here is my Mokotogan. Um, and the first thing I'm struggling with, um, being brutally honest, is trying to hold it in this slightly odd position. Normally, if I was using a bladed tool and cutting towards myself, um, I'd probably actually hold it like this. Um, and you know, you can do that. It, it just seems really wrong that, you know, using a tool like this in a way that it's not been designed for. It almost feels a bit like cheating using it like this. Um, so the first thing I've been trying to get used to is holding it in the way in which it was designed to be used. Um, once I, once you've got over that, and I, I'm starting to get used to it a bit now, um, is, is really, it's all about the pressure that you're applying and the angle that you're putting the blade on. Now if I try and cut with this the way that it feels natural, straight away I'm really having to use a lot of force to try and pull that through. Um, and it doesn't feel like I've got a particularly deep angle on this. Um, and what I noticed, so I've been, I've been doing this probably for the last 10, 15 minutes or so, just to sort of get my eye in. Um, and actually what I found is that you almost need to hold it, and hopefully you can see here, you know, I'm coming in at this kind of angle, which, which really doesn't feel particularly deep, but actually you almost need to have it so that the, the blade is not touching the wood at all. Um, to stop it from binding up and getting caught in the wood. So if I just give it a, a few runs, hopefully you can see that okay there. If I actually hold it like this, it feels like I'm twisting, I mean this is a really exaggerated version, but it feels like I'm actually holding the blade off of the wood. Um, and in fact, I'm not, I mean even that's probably a bit too deep. Um, and this is how really I think it's designed to be used. I mean, I'm only guessing here. I've not had any tuition in this. And there's not actually that many videos I've been able to find that give you a lot of detail on this. Um, so although I'm not really getting these really sort of long sweeping cuts out of it where I'm sort of taking material off um, continuously, 
Um, what I am finding is it's really good for picking up high spots. Um, so I want to try and get this more rounded, um, more like a, you know, a handle as opposed to just a big thick lump of wood. Um, and as long as I'm not putting that blade in too deeply, which I'm still doing occasionally, it's actually picking up just the high spot. So it's leaving the material that's sort of fairly low enough. I find a good example here. So here's kind of a fairly flat area. And on these flat areas, it works really, really well. And I'm taking off sort of slightly longer shavings. But when there is a high spot, if I come back around to here, so just this little point here is a little bit of a high spot. And what it's doing is it's only cutting when it hits this point here. And you can see that little shaving starting to curl. I mean, maybe if I um, cut this, so I'm just gonna wait for this plane to go overhead, guys. It's a particularly noisy one. Come on, get going. So there we go, so that's mostly out of the way now. Um, and again, if I do this slightly slower, and I, and I also do wonder if maybe I'm trying to walk before I can run here. Um, so, you know, obviously I've seen videos online um, and people are kind of doing this, 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 and they're getting loads of shavings off every time. And actually, I think probably in terms of technique, I need to go a bit slower, a bit more controlled. Um, and you can see here, you know, I'm running down this bit and it's only really when I hit here that it's starting to bite. Um, it's also learning which parts of this edge to work with. Now at the moment it's the belly of this blade that seems to be doing most of the work. Obviously I can come in with the tip if I really need to, um, but that's actually from my understanding for more detailed work. So really it's the belly of the blade that's doing most of the work for us here. And what I think I'm going to do, you know, I'll leave the camera running, I'll speed for a bit of the footage, um, and I'm just going to work my way round this just to try and sort of smooth this round all the way. So guys, I've also noticed if you um, do this standing up, you give yourself a nice wide stance and you're quite far back from the piece of material, you can get a lot of nice leverage going without any risk that this is going to come travelling towards you at speed. I mean obviously you still need to take a bit of care with it, but it's quite a nice got a bit of a knot there, quite a nice way of, uh, of working with this. Right then guys, that was about 10 minutes worth of work and hopefully you can see from, let me put it there where you've got a better view. So we've thinned this down quite considerably, certainly in comparison to up here. Um, and you know, I could have done this quicker if I'd used an axe or maybe used the axe first and then this. But actually, if this is the only tool that you're carrying, you know, it's perfectly um, acceptable for making something like a little um, carving mallet. Um, as I said before, you know, people make canoe paddles out of these or with these um, and that kind of thing. So again, for me, it's still very much a learning curve. Um, you know, I'm starting to get a feel for how it works now. Um, you almost need to make a kind of a scooping motion with it. Um, so as you're sort of coming, you don't run down flat. You're actually kind of doing sort of a, a twist halfway through, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you know, all in all, this is now perfectly comfortable and, and, and much nicer to use than if I was kind of holding it on the really thick part here. Um, so yeah, really liking this tool. Again, you'll be seeing more of it in future videos. Um, 
I think I might try and make a spoon out of a blank with just this, um, or at least as far as I can get with this. Um, the other thing I should very quickly mention is you can also, if you get down to maybe a little bit narrower than this, you can flip it round, hold it like, let's have a look, come a bit closer for you, you can kind of hold it like this with the blade facing away from you and using this curved edge, you can actually kind of run it along and it will pick up all the high spots, all those sort of little corners that you've created with your planing cuts. I mean, again, it's a little bit too thick for that here. Um, but you can essentially just use it to finish off. If you don't want like a faceted handle, you want it completely smooth, you can just use this side of it here. Um, so that's it for today, guys. Hope it was useful. Um, really interested to know if anybody else uses one of these and if you've got any tips um, or any thoughts on, on how it's working for you. I'd be really interested to know. Um, so as usual, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys.